Hey guys and welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to talk about Geology 8. We're going to take a look at how we can extract the information. I'm going to show you how we can create our own class with the Yolo V8 model. So it will actually be pretty easy to work with. In the previous videos, we've just been taking a look at how can we use the Yolo V8 model and how can we use like the framework and the code structure behind the Yolo V8 model. In this video here, we're basically just going to, to take the Yolo V8 model, uh, implement it in our own class, in Python so we can use it in our own Python script, projects, applications, and so on. So I'm going to show you how we can load in the model, extract all the information so we can use it in our own applications and projects. We can save the information, display the information ourselves, or do whatever we want to do with the detections from the YOLO V8 model. So we're now jump straight into Visual Studio Code. I'm going to show you how we can actually like import and load in YOLO V8 models from the new YOLO V8 repository from Autolytics. I'm also going to show you how we can use RoboFlow supervision to actually like uh, display our detections with all the labels, confidence scores, classes, and so on. Then I'll also show you how we can extract information for our own applications and projects, where we can basically just extract all the bounding boxes, all the coordinates for our bounding boxes, the confidence scores, the classes, and so on. So we can basically just store that in our own list. We can use for whatever we want. If we want to write it out to a file, draw our own detections on the frames that we're loading in from our camera, and all those different kind of things. Or if you just want to like trigger some some different kind of like systems based on the detections that you're doing with the Yolo V8 model. So first of all here, we're going to import the different modules. So we're going to use PyTorch. I have it working with my GPU. We also have NumPy, CV2. So we're going to visualize the things with CV2. We're also going to open up our webcam and video capture with OpenCV. Then we also have Ultralytics here. I also just import time so we can time uh, how long it takes to actually like run inference. So we're going to be able to run in real time. Uh, depending on the model that we're using. We also import Ultralytics here. So from Ultralytics, we just import the YOLO model. So I'm going to show how we can use this to actually like load in our models. We can both use pre-trained models, but we can also have our custom um, custom trained models. I have videos about all those different kind of things. So if you want to know how we can train your own YOLO V8 model, export them, uh, download them into your own computer, and then you can actually like just upload them and actually like load them as I'm going to do in this video. So if you're interested in that, definitely check those videos out. I'm covering like all of it. I'm also having trackers and all those different kind of things. Then we also need this supervision. So you can basically just pip install supervision in the command prompt or in the terminal. And then we're just going to use uh, from supervision here, we're just going to use some tools for actually like visualizing the detections and so on. I'm also going to extract all the information so we can visualize it ourselves. But this is just to show you an easy way to actually like get uh, the visualization up and running. And then you can basically just extract information, do do whatever you want uh, with the actual like information after that. So first of all here, we're going to create this object detection class. So we basically just have a class. We initialize it with some different kind of like parameters. Uh, we load in the model and then we also have some methods for actually like loading in the model, displaying the different kind of things that we want. Uh, so it, I'm basically just going to go over it, but we just create our object detection class. We have our init method here. So this is basically a, a function that will be called when we initialize an instance of our object detection class. So first of all, we need to pass in the capture index. This also works with uh, with videos. So if you have videos, you can basically just specify the path to that. But right now, I just have my capture index. I just set self.captureIndex equal to the capture index. So this will be the index of my camera um, attached to my computer. Then we set up the device. So if CUDA is available with PyTorch, we basically just use CUDA and the GPU so we can run way faster when we do inference. And if it's not available, you can just use the CPU uh, or it will just use the CPU as default. Then we just print out what device we are using. Then we are going to have a function here called load model. And I'll basically just go down to that right now. So we have this load model function. All it does is basically just taking this YOLO class that we imported from Ultralytics as we've been doing in all the other YOLO V8 uh, videos. We specified the model that we want to act like use. So if you don't have these models on your computer, so if I go over to the tab here, uh, I actually have these YOLO V8 medium, nano, small, and extra large model. But let's say you don't have the models yet, it will act like download it from the internet um, beforehand. So it will download the models, it will download all the weights, and then it will basically just create this model instance. Then we can fuse it so we get the information about the model, and then we just return the model so we can use it later on for inference. So again, you can just specify like if you have a custom trained model as from my other videos, you can basically just specify the path to the model here. It will load in that custom model and then you can run inference as I'm going to show you now. 
Then we just have some class names, a dictionary for all the class names that we have. So we have these Coco, uh, Coco classes from the pre-trained models. You can also like create your own. Uh, so you'll basically just go inside the model and then take the names from the model that you have trained. If you want to do custom object detection and all those different things, you can also use a pre-trained model and just go in and specify what type of class are you interested in. Then we're going to set up our box annotator, uh, which is basically just an annotator for drawing bounding boxes around our detections. So this, this, this is what we're going to use this supervision for. I'm also going to show you how you can do it yourself. But basically, we just create an instance of this box annotator class. We set up the color palette here uh, for the colors. So we just have different colors for the classes. Then we can just set up the thickness, the text thickness, and also the text scale. So these are just some of the parameters for the visualization. We already went over how to load the model. Now we can go down to the predict function. So again, this class here is actually like pretty simple. We just have a function for loading in the model. Uh, we just have a class for actually like having some kind of like structure that we can use. And then we have a predict function. And then we basically just have a display or plot bounding boxes function inside of this class. So this is an, a really easy way to use these v 8 model and extract all the information. But basically in this predict function, we take in a frame. And then we just pass the frame into a model. We do a forward pass in our YOLO V8 model. And then we just get the results out. We return the results and then we can use that later on. So the last method inside of our class before we're actually going to go down into the call method. And then I can show you how we can have the while loop. We open up our webcam, our radio capture. We read in the frames from our camera. And then we can basically just pass our frames through this model and this class that we just created. Then we basically have this plot bounding boxes. We throw in the results and also the frame that we want to visualize the results on. First of all, we just create these empty lists here. So these are the lists that will contain all the information that we're going to extract from the YOLO 8 model and the detections from the YOLO 8 model. So these lists here uh, are the ones that you can use for your own projects uh, when you have actually like extracted information. So let's say that you want to detect like persons, then all the person uh, coordinates for the bounding boxes will be stored in this one. Also the co corresponding confidence scores and the class IDs. So this is actually like how you would use the YOLO V8 model and extract information instead of just using like uh, the code structure from Autolytics or some other different kind of like frameworks uh, where they basically do like all the plotting for you. You can't really extract information, play around with it, use it in your own applications and projects. So that is what I'm going to show you guys in this video. So now we're going to extract the detection for a person class. So if, if you just want to like detect all the different kind of like classes that we have for the pre-trained models or for your own custom model, you will not have this if statement down here. You can basically just go inside, go like into Google, search for like Coco uh, class IDs, or you can basically just see what IDs does it return. Uh, if you just print it out while you're doing inference, then we basically just have class ID zero here, which is a person. So if we're detecting a person in the frame, we're basically just going to append um, the bounding boxes. So the bounding boxes X, Y, X, Y for the top left corner and the bottom right corner. First of all, we're going to put it on the CPU and convert it to NumPy. So we're going to do that with all, um, with both the, the bounding boxes, the confidence scores and the class IDs. So basically we just returned these results. So these are, this, these are the results that is returned by the predict method when we actually just throw the frame through, through the model. Then inside our results, we will have this boxes class. So we basically just go inside our boxes and then we have a number of different attributes for our, our boxes class. We can extract the X, Y, X, Y uh, coordinates, uh, the confidence scores and also the classes. So this is the way you would do it. Again, here we just have a follow running through all the detections that we have uh, in our image. First of all, we just extract the class IDs. And if the class ID is equal to zero, we're detecting a person. We just want to store all that information. So this is one way you can actually just go in and extract the specific classes that you want to, to detect with your model. If you're using a pre-trained one, if you're using a custom model that you're trained on your own data set, you will, of course, like you want to extract all the classes uh, that we're detecting in the frame. And then you will basically just uh, delete this if statement here and just append all the results to the lists. And then you can do whatever you want to these lists here. If you want to display the results, if you want to write them out to a file, um, make some other logic um, on top of that to actually like, do something in the real world. So let's say if we detect a person, do something. So now I've showed you how we can extract the information from the results and the output from the YOLO V8 model. Then I'm just going to show you how we can actually set up the detections for visualization with the supervision uh, framework from Roboflow. 
So basically we just set up these detections or like this detections class from uh, supervision. We specified X, Y, X, Y, uh, the confidence score and also the class ID. So we basically just extracted exactly in the same way as up here when we extracted information. Now we're just going to create this instance of our detections class. Then we have these detections over here to the left. We can just go through all the custom labels. So we basically just have a for loop running through all the detections and then we get the individual class IDs and the confidence scores for all the detections. So we get all the corresponding bounding boxes, class IDs and confidence scores. And then we basically just store it in this self.labels because then we're going to use this to actually like visualize our results. So we get all the bounding boxes, all the correct bounding boxes with the corresponding uh, labels and confidence scores. So now we can go down and do the annotate and display the frame. So from this box annotator, so basically up at the top here, we created this box annotator instance. So now we're going to use that and we're going to call the annotate method um, on that instance. We throw in the frame that we want to do detections on or like we want to display our results on. We throw in the detections we have and also the labels for the corresponding detections. This is basically everything we have to do to actually visualize the results with supervision. Again, you can extract, we have extracted all information in these three lists. So you would actually like be able to go in, like run a for loop, just displaying all these results here yourself uh, with the rectangle, put text and all those methods from OpenCV as we've been doing in some other videos here on the channel. But again, I just wanted to show you guys how we can extract information from the v 8 model. And for easy part, we're just going to display them with supervision. Then when we have annotated and displayed the frame, so we're basically just visualizing the results on the frame, then we just return the frame and then we can show it with our imshow function from OpenCV. So now we have our call methods. This is basically like our main, uh, our main function that will run uh, as long as the webcam is open and we don't terminate our program. So first of all, we're going to open up a video capture. So, so this is the exact same while loop as in all the other videos I have on the channel. Um, so we open up a video capture. We just assert that our camera is actually like open. Then we're going to set the frame width and the frame height. So the resolution of our camera to 1280 by 720. We have a while loop, so while true here, we can also have while cap is open, but up here, we just asserted that it is act like open. So we're just starting our timer. We read in a frame. Then we basically just call our predict, predict function. We throw in the frame, we get the result out from our model. Then we have the result stored in this variable. We can throw it into our plot boxes function here. We throw in the results and we also throw in the frame that we want to visualize the results on. We end the timer, calculate the number of frames per second and just display the number of frames per second as well on our frame so we can see how fast can we actually like run um, inference with this YOLO V8 model while we're extracting all the information and doing the visualization. Then when everything is done, we're just using imshow here. This is not YOLO V5, but this is YOLO V8. Then we just have the YOLO V8 detection and we throw in the frame and then we're just visualizing the results that we get. If we hit a Q or like escape on a keyboard at any time of the program uh, in the window, it will basically just terminate. It will go out of this while loop. We will break out of the while loop. We release on webcam and we will destroy all the windows that we have opened up with OpenCV. So now we have the whole class here. I basically just showed you the whole class. First of all, we have some initialization we need to do. We have load model, predict, plot bounding boxes. That is the whole class that we need to use. And then it is really easy to use this v 8 model in your own applications um, and so on. You can basically just have a file where we import this class and then you can directly use it. You can, you can like return these values here as well. You can basically just call a single function, return these values, and then you can play around with it in your own project and applications and fit it to your own needs. So now we have everything inside of our class. We can basically just go down and call an instance of our object detection class. We specify the capture index. We set that equal to zero. And then we just call the, the detector method. So our call method that I showed you here. So now everything is, is up running. We have the code. This is acts like really easy. We just have a class with around like 100 lines of code. You don't need to do anything. You can just directly use this. This will be on my GitHub. A link will be down in the description. You can just go in, copy paste it use it in your own applications and projects. So now our program is running. We can see that we have opened up the model at the bottom. We're using the medium model right now and we have fused it where you can see the number of layers, the number of parameters, uh, giga floating point operations per seconds. We're using Ultralytics version eight. 
Uh, we can see the Python distribution, the CUDA version, Torch version, and so on. So we can see that I'm actually like using CUDA. So I'm using NVIDIA RTX 4090 graphics card. So that is uh, rather fast. But if I just take the webcam up here, we should be able to get some results. As we can see, we have a person. Uh, we kind of have like have a, a bicycle here, but this is not a bicycle. This is my microphone. But again, we can basically just take it up. We're detecting a person. I can try to like move the camera around. So here we have a dock in the dock bed, and we also have a chair. Also have a potted plant over here to the right. So here we have a chair, a potted plant. Uh, so these are actually some really nice detections. We can see that right now it actually like detects me as a person up here at the top. If I just take the camera up here, we can see we have a book in the background. But again, these wrong predictions, they have really low confidence score, so it doesn't really matter like that much. We can basically just filter them out by looking at the confidence scores. Uh, we have a keyboard, we also have a mouse. Uh, here we're detecting a TV, which is my computer. I have a laptop here for my monitors. So this is actually like pretty nice uh, detections. Like the false positive we get, we can basically just filter those out uh, by setting up a confidence score. We will just have an if statement checking on the confidence score as well before we are storing the, the values. So if I just hit Q here or escape here on my keyboard, it will terminate the program. And then I'm just going to verify that it actually like works with the different list that we have extracted our information into. Uh, so basically here, I'm just going to print it. So we'd run through all our detections and then I'm just going to print the XYZ. So we have the XYZ, XYZ, and then we're just going to print it. We can see the results down here in the terminal. Uh, so I'm just going to run the program. Then we can actually like just verify that it works and that we're actually like extracting the information for a person. So right now we're not detecting any person. So right now we do. If I just take it over here, we don't get any information extracted into these lists. So they are just empty. We will only get information if we're detecting a person. So if I take it up here again, we can see that now we're detecting a person. We get all the bounding box values. So we have the top left corner and the bottom right corner. Uh, so that is what we can see here. And then if you have multiple persons, you would basically just have um, arrays inside of arrays. You can extract information, do whatever you want with it in your own applications and projects. So this acts like really nice. So that's it for this video. I've shown you how to create a class. We load in a model. We extract the re results from our YOLV8 model, display the results, how we can actually like play around with the results in our own application and project. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to subscribe button and bell notification on the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just really helps me and YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm doing these computer vision tutorials where we go over like all the basic image operation techniques algorithms, stereo vision, how we can like get depth information in our images, combine them with deep learning and all those different kind of things. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else on the next video guys. Bye for now.